Madam President, I know that Senator Roy Blunt of Missouri delivered his farewell remarks a short time ago, and regrettably I was uh, tied up in a long-standing appointment and couldn't be on the floor to hear them. But I wanted to say a few words about my friend from Missouri and thank him for his service to the Senate and to uh, our nation. I grew up in East St. Louis, Illinois, just across the Mississippi River from St. Louis, Missouri. My hometown now is Springfield, Illinois, and Roy Blunt's hometown is Springfield, Missouri. We often joke about catching the wrong plane in St. Louis and ending up in one another's homes. Senator Blunt and I came from different political parties, obviously. We have different ideas on a lot of things. But over the 12 years he served in his, his state of Missouri in the Senate, he's become a friend and an ally. Managing the Mississippi River is an issue that we share. Many of the locks and dams that keep the river navigable are nearly 100 years old. For many years now, Senator Blunt has worked with me and with the Army Corps of Engineers to come up with a plan that we call the Navigation Ecosystem Sustainability Program, shorthand NESP. It will expand and modernize seven locks at the most congested locations on the upper Mississippi and Illinois rivers to make sure the waterways can continue to serve as major navigation channels, moving crops and other goods. I'm really grateful to Roy Blunt for his leadership supporting biomedical research. There's a good story here. My partnership with Senator Blunt started almost 10 years ago. I went out to the National Institutes of Health for a tour and sat down with the legendary Dr. Francis Collins, who headed up the Institute of Health. For years, NIH had limped along with flat funding and sequestration budget cuts. Inadequate funding had really hurt research at NIH. It discouraged a lot of young scientists who just couldn't count on regular funding from Congress. Or they chose to maybe move back to other nations where they were born and the research funding was more predictable. I asked Dr. Collins, what does NIH need? And he said, just give me 5% real growth in our budget every year consistently and we'll light up the scoreboard with our discoveries and cures. So I came back and looked for Roy Blunt. He was the Republican, leading Republican, on the Appropriations Committee for the National Institutes of Health. He chaired the Labor HHS Appropriations Subcommittee. And he, we decided to put together a team. A natural ally in that team was Senator Patty Murray, Democrat of the state of Washington, the lead Democrat on the HELP Committee and on the Appropriations Committee. And to round it out into two Democrats and two Republicans, now retired Senator Lamar Alexander, who led the HELP Committee when Patty Murray was ranking member and vice versa. We agreed on our common goal, the four of us, 5% real growth every year in the National Institutes of Health. In the first year working together, Senator Blunt overdid it. He helped steer a historic $2 billion, or 7%, to the NIH. I remember getting a phone call from Roy, and it was a few weeks before Christmas. We were on break with our families, and it's uncommon for senators to call one another under those circumstances. But he called me and he said he'd just spoken with the leaders from Barnes Jewish Hospital, which is a major health and research institution in St. Louis. They were ecstatic about the care they were able to give their patients and the research they were going to undertake because of this new level of funding. Senator Blunt said it was unlike any call he'd ever received in his congressional career. And then he said to me, Durbin, we can't be one hit wonders. And from there, we were off. Since 2015, with the help of Senator Murray and others, through changes in presidency and through pretty divisive times, we've succeeded on a bipartisan basis to keep a steady, predictable funding for the National Institutes of Health as a bipartisan priority. Over seven years, we've seen NIH funding increase by more than $14 billion, a nearly 50% increase from where we started. These new investments are supporting hundreds of thousands of jobs nationwide in research institutions, large and small. They're saving lives, and they'll continue to do so for decades to come.
So I want to personally thank Roy Blunt, Senator from Missouri, for his leadership in funding this breakthrough medical research. I also want to thank his staff for their wisdom, professionalism, calm demeanor. They consistently look for ways to work together for the common good. Senator Blunt honored his commitment to medical research and made a difference in America. I said to him today as we were gathered at a tribute to the Capitol Police for defending us on January 6th, I said, Roy, the reason we all come here is to make a difference in the, this great nation that we live in. You've made that difference in medical research and you'll be remembered for it. He's pursued our, our shared goal with decency, genuine curiosity, and a vision for the promise of medical discovery. There are people here in America today and around the world who are going to have better lives because of Roy Blunt's commitment. That's a legacy which he can certainly be proud of. Loretta and I wish him and his wife Abby and his family all the best as they start this new chapter in life. I'm sorry to see him go. I'm losing a great friend and a great senator. I yield the floor.